Hello! This video is brought to you by the Math and Science Learning Center as part of the Quantitative Literacy and Reasoning Lecture Series. This particular video is about finance, specifically compound interest. So when we talk about interest, generally we split it up into two different kinds. We have simple interest, where interest is always charged on the initial amount invested, what we call the principal, and compound interest, where interest is not only charged on the principal amount, but also on everything earned in interest. So for instance, if I invest $100 in an account that earned 3% in a compounding period, at the first compounding, I will earn $3, right? So my new total is $103. At the second compounding, I'm going to charge interest on that total $103, not just my initial investment of $100. So as you would expect, it can grow much faster this way than simple interest, which is great when it comes to a savings account, but maybe not so much with credit cards or loans. So this is our compound interest formula. Uh, as you can see, it's solved for the amount we would have in an account after t years. P is representative of our principal, or the initial amount that we're investing. Our APR is the annual percentage rate. That's how much interest is getting charged over a full year. Um, something to keep in mind here is that we will be given that number as a percentage, but when you use it in the formula, you need to change it to a decimal. N is going to be representative of the compounding periods per year, so that's how many times interest will be charged in a one-year period. And then T is representative of the time in years. So that means that this exponent is representative of the total number of times that interest is compounded. Now depending on the type of account you have, com or interest can be compounded at a different frequency. So some accounts are compounded semi-annually, some are compounded monthly, uh, some maybe even daily. Um, but what is most important uh, for us to understand is that the more times you compound, the more money will accrue. Yeah, so um, as you can see, the account that is only compounded two times earns less than the, comp or the account that is compounded daily. Now one thing to notice about this is that it does start to level off a little bit in terms of how much it's increasing each time. All right, so that's just something to keep in mind is that there does seem to be a limit or a cap to how much we can actually earn in this scenario. I will talk a little bit more about that in a different video. So let's see if we can use this information to uh, help us understand this in context. All right, so we are told that the national average uh, for savings accounts right now in terms of APR is 0.09%. And we find a, an account that is compounded quarterly and we're planning on investing $500 for three years. So our goal is to figure out how much is gonna be in the account after that amount of time. So anytime with these types of problems, our goal is to first determine what information we have and what we're looking for. So since we are trying to figure out what we're going to have in the future, we're looking for A. And we should have all of the other pieces. So let's see. P is the initial amount invested. So we're told that we're investing $500 to start. All right. Then our APR is going to be our annual percentage rate, which in this case we are given is 0.09%. Now, as previously stated, when we use it in our formula, we need to make sure that we change it to a decimal. So we're actually going to move that decimal place two times to the left to have a value of 0 0.0009. Very small. All right, N is the number of times it's compounded per year, and we are told that we are in an account that is compounded quarterly, so that's going to be four times. And then lastly, we have T, which is the number of years that we're going to keep it in the account, which is three. Okay, so now that we've identified all of our variables, we can just plug it all in and see what we get. Something I would suggest when you are plugging this in your calculator is that you do put the exponent uh, in parentheses, right? Because if you don't, it might end up multiplying something that you wanted in the power. Um, so just keep that in mind. Parentheses are important here. The other thing to keep in mind when you are inputting things into your calculator is that you want to round as little as possible. For my purposes of writing this down, I'm going to use rounded values, but you, when you are doing it for yourself, 
should just leave it in the calculator as best you can. Yeah, so that you don't end up with rounding error. So all of this stuff here can be simplified a little bit to the 12th. And when we multiply that out, we find that the amount left in the account, or the amount earned on the account, will be $501.35. Okay, so in that three year period, we only earned $1.35, but that's to be expected with such a low interest rate. Let's see if we can apply this to one more scenario. So in this scenario, you are hoping to study abroad, and you know that by the end of two and a half years, you're going to need to have $9,000 saved up. And so you found a savings account that has an interest rate, uh, an annual interest rate of 2.15% that is compounded monthly. That means you're getting charged interest every month. So your goal, it says, is to figure out how much you need to invest in order to have $9,000 by the time you're ready to study abroad. So let's see if we can figure out what variables we have and which ones we don't. So we're told that over the next two and a half years is when we are going to uh, save up funds. So our T is going to be two and a half. All right, and then we're told that we are looking to save up $9,000. Now here's the tricky part. This is the final amount that's gonna be in our account at the very end, not what we're putting in right now. So rather than it being P, the 9,000 is A, because it's what we're trying to get to at the very end of our period. We are also told that our APR, our annual rate, is 2.15% as previously stated. All right, I need that to be a decimal, so I'm gonna move that decimal point over two places to the left to get a rate of 0 0.0215. We're also told that this account is compounded monthly, so N is going to be 12. All right, so we have A, APR, T, and N. The only thing that we don't have is P, and that's what we're gonna be searching for here because we're trying to figure out how much we need to invest initially. So we can put everything in their spots and solve accordingly. All right, so from this point, uh, you can go ahead and put those things in your calculator, right? All of this 1 plus 0 0.0215 divided by 12, all of that business, right? And again, as previously stated, you are not going to round. I'm going to round just to write it down, but you really want to keep it in your calculator as long as possible. Okay, so when you solve all of that out, you find that it's 0 1.05517, so on and so forth. Now our ultimate goal is to find P. Right now it's being multiplied by that long number, so I'm going to divide it away as my opposite uh, operation. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I divide that all out. And when I divide 9,000 by that number, I'm going to find that I should initially invest $8,529.43. So that's how much I need to initially put in my account if I am to raise, or raise it up to 9,000 by the end of two and a half years. Hopefully this video helped in your understanding of compound interest. If you still have questions, please visit the Math and Science Learning Center and a tutor should be able to help you in your understanding.